So a quick word on weight fluctuations. Um, we often get people that maybe up your calories a couple weeks later, or maybe a couple days later, or sometimes the next day. You step on the scale and it gives you that crazy number. You know, that 12 pound gain in two days or what have you. I say what have you a lot in some of these videos I've noticed, so watch for that and ignore me when I do. So, anyways, that scale will move with a variety of factors. So I just want you to kind of keep in mind some of the things that I'll go over, okay? So, number one, um, you know, we always look to sodium, of course. Is your sodium really high the day before? Obviously, you don't want to weigh in the next day because your body is going to retain massive amounts of water and it's going to transform to a 37 pound gain in a day. So don't eat crazy sodium and get on the scale the next day. Just remember that. Um, another one that we're really familiar with is for women that time of the month. Crazy. I gained like seriously, five to 10 pounds. It's bad, really. It's not cute at all. I mean, if you don't believe me, really, just check my profile. There's some pics in there for some times when I was like crazy bloated. And I mean, I look pregnant, so yeah. Um, the thing about that, that a lot of people don't realize is that just because the bloat is gone doesn't mean the water is. So, you know, I often get women will say, you know, hey, it's been two days since my time of the month. So, you know, I know that that's not it. The bloat's gone. So I know that's not the reason for my, you know, 0.25 or two pounds or whatever. They're up still, you know. But, you know, just because you don't see it doesn't mean it's not there. So, you know, sometimes it can take a good five to seven days before it's all gone. So just something to keep in mind. Um, another one is lifting weights. A lot of people don't know, well, you know that we recommend the strength training. We're all about the iron because, you know, it's just hands down the best way to change your body composition, but I'll get more into that later. Well, the thing to understand, if you want to adapt weightlifting into your routine, the thing to remember is that when you lift weights, you're essentially, you're tearing the muscle. So in order for that muscle to repair, to, you know, become bigger and stronger, what happens is that water is pulled into the muscle just to kind of protect it while it repairs. So, you know, when you lift weights, don't weigh in the next day, especially legs, which also explains, ladies, why sometimes, you know, your jeans just don't like you after leg day. Yeah, because I know mine don't. So just that's something else to keep them on. So what, you know, I usually do is that um, typically I'll wait till like an off week. You know, if I'm doing a lot of weights, like almost every day or so, I'll wait until I've had like a week off from weights before I do a true weigh in. You know, I mean, even if I'm kind of checking my weight daily just to see what my pattern is, I'll still wait for that off week to do my true weigh in. So, you know, um, another thing that sometimes I do is that because I'll lift weights on Friday and then typically I don't lift again until Monday. So sometimes I use that Monday for my weigh in, but you know, that's where the sodium thing comes in because if I'm, you know, who knows what I'm eating over the weekend. So, you know, sometimes that Monday weigh in isn't really as accurate either. So just something to keep in mind is kind of wait until you had a couple days, you know, off from the weights because, you know, you'll get that crazy weigh in if you weigh in like the day after weights and then you're like hey why am I up 10 pounds so something else to consider um another thing to consider is your stress your cortisol levels if you are in a high stress environment you know or you're a high stress person you know hey I'm like that I stress out a lot you know often for no reason at all but you have to find a way to de-stress if you're that type of person because you know with stress comes cortisol and with the whole you know cortisol equals belly fat scenario 
you know, this that's not a pretty thing. That's not something that you want to go through because that's something that you'll either see on a scale or you'll see it, you know, in your measurements. So, you know, you don't want to go that route. But that's also another reason why we're really, really big on taking your measurements. Because, you know, the scale is not always going to be the tell-all, you know. And probably 8 times out of 10, people will see movements with that tape before they see movements on the scale. So I highly recommend getting some tape, measuring those problem areas for you, you know. Um, keep track of those weekly because most of the time you'll notice that that's where the changes will happen, you know. And honestly, I don't care if <laughs> 175 pounds and I weigh a size 2, you know. I mean, it does take some time before you can get to a place like that mentally, you know, where you don't care if your weight and size actually correlate. But I really don't anymore, you know. So inches are very important because they decide what size clothing you wear. They decide, you know, how big your waist is, how big your belly is, things like that. So you know, you really want to make sure that you're also really keeping track of those measurements. Um, I can also get into that in another video. But the only other thing that you do want to make sure that is if you are still very, very new into the eat more lifestyle, just expect, you know, to go four to six weeks without seeing a change on the scale, you know, either way. And then that way, if you go two weeks and you actually see a result, then hey, you know, it's a nice surprise. So, you know, that may not always be the case. So if you plan ahead for just, you know, four to six weeks before anything huge happens for you to notice, then, you know, you're kind of better prepared for that. Um, so I think that's about all the reasons that the scale will fluctuate. If I think of any more, I'll add them later um, um like i said i really want to keep these videos shorter but i talk too much so it's i probably shouldn't have been the person assigned to do these videos but that's just the way it is um if there's if you have more questions if you are seeing other things that are going on with the scale and you're not really understanding them you can still just ask this question in the form and we'll try to get back to you either in typed or video form as soon as possible okay